Hey, what is going on, everybody? Boylan here, back for another video on Marvel Strike Force. Now, uh, today in this video, we're here to talk about the Illuminati. Now, hopefully, you watched my video yesterday talking about the events that are upcoming where you are going to need or potentially use this team on offense for Cosmic Crucible, actually starting on later today. But a lot of people have been asking me, you know, Boylan, should we be upgrading Illuminati? And, and what I mean by that is like kind of beyond the levels that you uh, did probably or not for pocket dimension. And so I want to talk in this video about the pros and the cons of upgrading them beyond like 80 G15, because you kind of need a G15, at least on three characters to clear uh, pocket or temporal dimension. Uh, but I want to talk about the values that they have maybe beyond that free to play. I'm not here to talk about Captain Britain, OK, because, you know, a I don't have him. Uh, B, you know, he's not he's not free to play friendly in the slightest. Uh, so we're not going to be really discussing him. We're going to be discussed discussing the main five characters and whether or not you should be taking them to say 95 G18 or greater and what characters may have more value than others. So if you're ready to go, let's boil this down. Now, maybe you saw this late Friday night. I haven't really had the chance to kind of discuss this yet. So I am going to do it here. The Illuminati's did receive, the some of the characters did receive a little bit of an upgrade, uh, specifically with uh, Black Panther Shuri's passive and how it functions. Uh, basically, I, she should counter, I think, Masters of Evil now, uh, stopping characters from getting their speed up. So when Shuri is charged, she prevents villains from gaining speed up. However, if the villain is on the offense side, they gain it before spawn. This has been uh, corrected, I suppose. She now gains charge prior to the other characters on spawn passes, regardless of whether she's an offense or defense. What's interesting about this, though, makes me wonder why they did not change that when it came to, was it Cabal, who was not blocking the on spawn turn bar of this Marvel Hardlight, something like that, like when they when they first came out? I don't know. They decided to change it now, I guess. And so good, I guess it makes them a little bit better, both for the free to play version and the paid version. While we were reviewing the Illuminati and the performance in battle, we decided to make a few more adjustments as well. So I did make some complaints about how I felt that Black Bolt at the time did like nothing. I felt like the upgrades were very minor and it was a bit disappointing. Uh, so there is a little bit better now. Uh, Hank Pym's ultimate tank Pym starting ability energy cost increased uh, from three to four. Now, oh, that means he can use it on turn one, I think, right? Like, I think, because I, I do have him upgraded, actually. So it's currently, right. So it's going to be a maximum of, oh, no. So you're going to be able to do this on turn two rather than turn three, I guess, or other ways that they get. I'm not an expert on Illuminati, so I guess the turn order, you know, he should be able to do this one turn earlier, I guess, is the what I'm getting out from this. Uh, and Hank Pym is actually a pretty good character. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna talk about him in a little while here. Uh, Black Bolt increased base damage stat by an additional 10%. I don't know if that's going to equate to like a huge difference, uh, but it, it's it's welcome because I think that honestly Black Bolt had the most lackluster rework because his whole thing was just damage. This part is okay. Uh, the ultimate uh, was changed to be unavoidable with, you know, you're basically going to see this in Cosmic Crucible unless you use them in Alliance War, things like that, but they have to be within that team. So it's okay there. Uh, that helps when going up against people with evades because it was super annoying or even like Tangled Web uh, where, you know, that would miss. Black Panther Shuri, the special. If this character has two or more Illuminati attacks, uh, sorry, allies, uh, this attack is unavoidable. That is good. Uh, so unavoidable stuff, always great. That's always good to hear. Apply heal block for two turns to all secondary targets. I believe it wasn't only doing it to the primary target. And then Iron Man is seeing a little bit of an improvement, I guess. Cannot be counterattacked or blocked. And this special also generates more energy, I think for Illuminati allies, for adjacent Illuminati allies. So your positioning is going to matter a little bit. You're going to want to probably have uh, Iron Man wedged between two other characters, probably your newer characters like Black Panther, Shuri, and Hank Pym so that they can get it because the newer characters are going to tend to do, have more value there. So I think that's going to be important. I think that's going to lead you, my guess is maybe to like a turn to Hank Pym alt off of this special. Now let's talk about what kind of value that these characters have. Okay, so... I think, obviously, if you're thinking about upgrades, there's a couple of things. And, and this is going to stem from experience as well from my alt account. 
I decided on my alt account to take Black Bolt to gear 18, 95 for Dark Dimension 6. This was in place of Nova because I felt that uh, both as a means to an end for Pocket Dimension, but also for Dark Dimension 6, that I didn't really feel that great about leveling up uh, Nova. I also don't even have him unlocked actually in my alt account. It's such a terrible event because you need Masters of Evil and, and Quicksilver and X-Factor and all that crap. And you're basically just soloing it down with Kang. Now, one thing that's going to be interesting is that the cosmic, when the old man Logan comes back around, like whenever that is, right, there is a cosmic bio section, which means that characters like Black Bolt and Mr. Fantastic is going to have a little bit more value there. So that part is nice that if you really want to build these characters up, you're going to be able to get some value out of them in that event, too. So that's something that they have going for them. Uh, Mr. Fantastic on his own, however, I probably would not do that. You know, I don't think there's a lot of standalone value. Same with Iron Man. So if anyone's going to have like G18 kind of value, like uh, excluding Crucible, let's just say other events and things like that, it's going to be Black Bolt, at least of the three reworked characters. I think Hank Pym actually has a pretty good kit. And what I like a lot about Hank Pym versus, say, the other characters is his synergy with hero characters. And I think that's really good. You know, the on spawn bear yourself and all heroes for 25%. That's really nice. That's a lot, even outside of Crucible. You know, Crucible speed up, so that's mostly Illuminati stuff, right? It does it for himself as well. I think that his kit does have some good outside the team abilities. So if you don't want to level up Illuminati to max, but you do want to level up Hank Pym, for example, I could see some hybrid combinations of that because on turn, attack all enemies for piercing, flip stealth, but also applies offense down as well each time it does that, which is really great. And it does that outside of Cosmic Crucible. This attack just that happens more times if it, you're you're in Cosmic Crucible. But say for Dark Dimension, or uh, that's why I'm thinking, maybe something that uses Avengers, because he has the Avengers tag as well. You know, this passive is really powerful as far as like a support character goes, because you're applying offense down every time he takes a turn. Uh, you know, unless you fail the focus check, I suppose. Uh, and, but otherwise, that's really, really great. Uh, there's lots of other stuff here as well. Max Barrier for himself and Illuminati allies, but he's got some really good kit stuff. His ultimate, also pretty cool for a heal, uh, has a lot of debuffs, crazy. Clear immunity, apply slow AoE for two turns, defense down for two turns, really good within the context of Dark Dimension, in my opinion, as well. Heal self and all hero allies, so if you're doing like a heroes combination for, for DD, I could see Hank Pym being in there as well. And in Crucible, apply trauma to all enemies, and that's not locked to being an Illuminati. So you could see some future down the line, hero combination of characters, you know, or if, you, if you're not investing into Captain Britain, right, or the rest of the team, I could see some value still with Hank Pym being able to do a lot of the things that he can do, or even like a twosome with him and Black Panther Shuri with some hybrid variation of hero characters. I could definitely see that. And I think the kits are very good. Uh, there's a heal here. Fortunately, this part, the barrier part is locked, the Illuminati, that part's a little bit unfortunate, but he can clear all vulnerable from self and all hero allies. So again, not locked. Love this part. 35% healing is a lot. Once he, become farm, once he becomes farmable, I think it's going to be really amazing. A safeguard, unfortunately, locked to him and the team, but that's okay. So I think he's got a really good kit. Uh, barrier, tons of barrier, uh, and it affects hero allies. Love that synergy there, and it's not locked to the team. Most of this is not locked to the team. So I think that there's some great value. I've actually seen some people using Hank Pym at G19 already. People with about 5-5, five, five, you know, 5 yellow, 5 red. Uh, you taking Hank Pym to G19 for Dark Dimension as well. Because I think that if you're using, say, a combination of Extreme X-Men and Hank Pym, you know, other hero characters, there's some value in here. He's also a tech character. Tech characters are notoriously, uh, there's less, you know, less, less good characters. And so he would be a solid choice to use your tech gear for those kinds of things, in my opinion. Black Panther Shuri, I didn't need her to clear Pocket Dimension. And at this point in time, I think what you have to understand is that while they are going to be, and yes, they are going to be for the next legendary character, we don't know when that's going to be. That could be two or three months out at this point in time. And I don't like the idea of upgrading characters in advance of a legendary event that we know nothing about. Uh, because really, at the end of the day, you know, there could be like an old man Logan scenario where, you know, you could have just cleared it at D15 with, with a completely separate team, right? And you didn't even need the main team. So I don't know what they're going to do down the line. So I don't like the argument of, yes, we need them for the next legendary, right? Uh, because there's new characters coming out all the time. We have the Annihilators around the corner as well, uh, which is going to be in that new stat creep era. And so is your gold best used on Illuminati now 
that depends on whether or not you're kind of like competitive or want to be competitive in Cosmic Crucible. Now, the non-Captain Britain version, from my understanding, I have not used it. Obviously, you can see I don't really have a, a serviceable team at this point in time, but I've heard that they can beat teams like Superior Six. Uh, definitely the, like those kind of tech villain related characters. Uh, I'm not sure about Cabal. I don't really see people use Cabal on defense, at least in my crucibles. Let me know in the comments down below what other teams that, you know, you've used the free to play Illuminati on. But my point is, is that if you're not big and competitive into Cosmic Crucible, I don't think that you really need to upgrade some of these characters right now or that they're worth doing, you know, past the what you whatever you did for Pocket Dimension, right? You know, in Hank Pym, I, I'm kind of already into Global Dark Dimension 7, actually. So I've kind of like missed the boat of upgrading him. But if I was like coming up the way, I definitely would be considering Hank Pym. And, and I upgraded Guardian to G19. As a tech character, global tech character, I would have gladly have done Hank Pym instead. You know, because I'm not actually seeing a ton of value out of Guardian, unfortunately. But I think Hank Pym would have been a lot better as a support character and the debuffs that he contains. So really happy about him. Uh, Black Panther Shuri actually has a pretty decent kit. Uh, she has a lot of ability. She has a lot of debuffs, actually, in fact, but she is a mystic character. Uh, so and and whether or not that's available to you for your purposes, say for G19 or whatever like that. Uh, I was never too huge into Wakandan characters, so I'm going to I'm going to try to be objective. Uh, but and I heard that she she has some pretty low cooldowns, so there might be some good value here in her skills. Like she does do trauma on her ultimate outside of Cosmic Crucible. It just applies trauma to the primary target. Uh, and does more trauma in Crucible. So I think that if you wanted to just get away with using Shuri and Hank Pym in a Heroes team, I think that this is probably viable. It just might be, uh, it might look a little bit different. And uh, I'm not kind of a theory crafter in Crucible enough to know exactly what that is. That being said, I want to kind of in the second half of the video here, uh, not that, I don't know, I still have that up, I guess. So those are the uh, the Captain Britain daisy chain offers. I just can't, I can't, I can't, can't get on board with this. That's all. I wanted to take a look at the character stats for Hank Pym and Shuri specifically, because I do feel that they have more value than the other three characters. I, do, I just can't, can't in good conscience recommend people to, you know, take Iron Man to G1985. Now that the three diamonds are out for Mr. Fantastic, though, like I could see people doing this like 95 G18 to utilize those three diamond stats. And actually what I do like about his kit is the orbital assault. It's on a low cooldown, actually. And it does do piercing damage in the presence of two or more Illuminati allies. So maybe you could do like a three person Illuminati with Mr. Fantastic and these two and like two uh, Black Knight, let's say. I've seen a lot of people actually using Black Knight uh, on a defense and an offense with this team. So there could be some value there, right? You know, and I could see some mixing and matching and I would be interested to see that. But again, only if you're competitive and crucible, I don't think it's really worth it otherwise. But let's take a look at their stats. Now, I want to look at health first. So Hank Pym is actually eighth in health. Now, the actual number doesn't really matter that much. I'm like, I'm doing seven yellow, seven red, year 18, blah, 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 blah. That's not really that important, but the ranking is important. So Hank Pym's at eight, which is really solid because I already talked about how decent I think he is already uh, as far as his barrier mechanics go and the hero synergy. So I'm happy to see that. As far as Black Panther Shuri, I might have to actually search for that. Black Panther Shuri is 52. So again, it's kind of like a damage character. I wasn't really expecting this. Let's kind of flip it on its head for damage, though. We have Black Panther Shuri at number five. It's actually pretty impressive, given that obviously Ares is one <laughs> completely different topic because Ares is there is damage stat is insane. Mephisto at number two, Red Goblin three, Guardian at four. Surprisingly, I was just talking about him. And then Black Panther at number five with Old Man Logan just a little bit behind that. So those are some impressive damage stats. But, you know, you got to remember that from a free to play perspective, you're looking at like a three or four yellow. And so you're not going to really realize these stats until farmability because this is seven, seven. Right. And so the scaling does matter. And so these characters might be more from a free to play perspective, ones that you'd want to consider once they become farmable in about like two and a half, three months. Uh, but right now, I think, you know, if you are stuck at the three to four yellow, it just not might not be worth your time right now. And I think that this is probably more indicative, I suppose, of how the game is with free to play versions of the characters. Not not all free to play versions of new characters are always good because of that three, four yellow maximum range until farmability, uh, unless you buy into passes and things like that. But that's never another story. Let's, let's take a look at armor. Oh, sorry, actually, we didn't look at Hank Pym. Where's Hank Pym on the damage? Hank, where are you, Hank? 
38. That's not too bad for a support character, actually. Uh, let's go to armor. Let's start with Hank then, because I already have him the fine button. 84. Support character, kind of healer, so I didn't really expect that. Let's do Shuri. Not that Shuri. <laughs> 69 for Black Panther Shuri. Okay. Uh, focus should be a little bit better. 14 for Black Panther Shuri in focus. Where is Hank Pym? 98. That's tough. So what I have recommended at lower stars for Hank Pym is actually to run a Skirmisher ISO because if you're using him standalone especially, you want to make sure that his passive does land that offense down. And you may not be able to do that exactly if you're at low stars, uh, even if you're at G19, depending on what content you're using him on. So I, I would, you know, be cautious about that if you're using him outside the team and you want to land some of these debuffs. Resistance. Hank Pym at 98 and Shuri is at 100. They're actually like right next to each other. Uh, on resistance so it is what it is but Shuri's really fast at 133 and Hank Pym's at 127 they're very speedy characters and I like that so what's the TLDR I do like the new characters I like Hank Pym and I like Black Panther Shuri I just don't have the gold for Black Panther Shuri myself so that's not going to happen and I, I honestly I don't really have the gold for Hank Pym at 95 to 100 either so for me this is a pass for now until I know more about the next legendary character and its event and what I might need, then I will do it then. But I'm not someone who upgrades these characters pre prematurely. That's a word, right? And <laughs> if you are competitive in Cosmic Crucible, I think that there's some value here. But part of me just doesn't like the idea that, I don't know, the reworks just wasn't impressive enough for me. And that kind of puts a damper on how I feel about the team. And the whole Captain Britain fiasco mess just honestly makes me feel a bit dejected, I guess, for lack of better words, about this team overall. But I think once they become farmable, I could see some big things in Hank Pym's future because not only can he do a lot of things without his team, there's a lot of hero synergy, and I'm really happy for that. So maybe not now for me, but maybe by the time they're farmable. So that's going to be it. Also, the reason why I have no gold is because I just spent it on level 100 ultimates. Oops! but I'll be able to get to use that later on. So anyways, uh, that's the end of this video, everyone. And until next time, uh, stay safe and healthy, and I'll see you all later. Boylan, signing out.